Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 36 for the 24th of TVs in a leap year. And today we're going to be beginning chapter 13. We're going to consider, continue discussing the idea of a Benoni, the idea of an intermediate man, and exploring the inner psyche of the Benoni. So by way of introduction, I wanted to give you guys a little exercise. I wanted you to think about a time when you might have, have felt an internal conflict of some time, some type, some type of maybe moral conflict where, you know, you, you really felt like doing one thing, but you knew the right thing was to do something else. And for each person, this is going to be something different. And these internal conflicts can be very, very powerful. And while it might be easy to say on the outside, uh, you know, obviously just do the right thing. Don't, you know, if, if you know something's wrong, don't do it. But we all struggle with these internal conflicts that we have. And the conflict is very real. And sometimes that impulse to do something, even if it might not, not necessarily be the most beneficial thing, the most ideal thing, can feel extremely strong to the point that a person might really feel like if they acted on that impulse, they really just could not control themselves. And in fact, they might even rationalize that they were doing, they had to do it and it was actually the right thing to do because they were being true and authentic to themselves. So what we're going to learn about today, and we've kind of discussed this a little bit before, is this idea that we are able to conquer our impulses. Hashem made us in such a way that we, we do have the tools and the ability to overcome this feeling of we must do this thing, these compulsions that we have to behave in ways that are not necessarily ideal for ourselves. And the proof of this is in the the person of the Benoni. The Benoni is somebody who has succeeded in totally having self-rulership. So once again, as we've mentioned before, the Benoni is not somebody who doesn't have these impulses. They are very, very much at war with themselves internally. They feel these same impulses that you and I feel all the time. And so the only difference is that they aren't ruled by them. They're able to exert a sense of self-control. So if we start looking at the text of the Tanya, what the way that it the way that Ultra Rabbit starts off here in chapter 13 is he says that this is why the language of the sages when they talk about the Benoni in the Gemara in Brachos page 61b, which the Ultra Rabbit cited at the very beginning, the language was very specific. It said that in a Benoni, Zev ze Shoftan, this one and this one judges them. So it doesn't say that this one and this one rules over them. It says that this one and this one judges them. Because if we were to ascribe rulership to the Yetzir Hara, to the evil inclination within this inner city, which is the body, even for a, a split second, a moment, as we've learned, this person would be called a Rasha at that moment. So rather, the way that we can think about the Yetzir Hara within a Benoni is he's more like a judge or maybe like a lawyer who says his opinion in court, you know, and states his case. And, and then yet when the actual decree comes down, you know, when the court, so to speak, comes down and, and brings its verdict, there's another judge and there's another lawyer who comes, which is, you know, the, the Yetzir Tov, the, uh, the godly soul that says their opinion as well. And then you have to find, you know, a place in the middle, like, okay, so then like the final arbitrator is going to come and say which one wins. And as, we, as we've learned, to, to just give kind of like a visual for this, the, uh, the Yetzir Hara, it's speaking from the left ventricle of the heart. That's where it comes from. 
And then it, from there, it rises up to the brain. And the Nefesh Elokis, the godly soul, by contra contrast, starts out in the brain. And then from there, it spreads out into the right ventricle of the heart. And then who is the arbitrator? So now we have these two judges. So who's going to arbitrate these two things? This is going to be God, actually. And who, and what and what side is God on? <laughs> Would you think of God is a little bit biased, and God is biased towards the side of the Yetzir Tov, the good inclination. And so then God helps him out a little bit. And how does God help him out with? This fact that, you know, as we've mentioned previously, God shines a little bit of light onto the godly soul so that it has a little bit more of an advantage over the folly. So God's not really such a fair judge in this case. God is a little bit biased towards the, the Yitzhar Tov. And, and he gives this, he shines this light that illuminates in a way that, as we've discussed previously, that light pushes away darkness. You know, if you spread a little bit of light, it eradicates a lot of darkness, as we've spoken about before. So that's the end of today's Tanya. So just a little bit of a recap again. Um, so we're talking about, you know, in the case of a Benoni, that a Benoni, yes, they have within them these two forces, and they're very much alive and well, and they're very much at war and fighting, the Yitzhar Tov and the Yitzhar, Yitzhar Hara. However, to understand it and why it is that they're able to exert the control, the ultimate control, self-control to behave in the right way is because... The Yetzir Tov and the Yetzir Har, they're merely judges or maybe lawyers we can think of that are stating their case and fighting very much for their case, but they're not the final arbitrator. They're not the final judge. That final judge is God, and God is going to be biased somewhat towards the good, which is what allows that good to have a slight advantage over the bad and prevent them from doing any wrong. And to bring this back to the personal exercise, which we mentioned in the beginning, when you're feeling an internal con conflict as to what to do, when you know what the right thing is to do, but you feel like doing something else. So this conflict might feel very intense for you at the time. It might feel like, you know, you really, 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 it's like, how could you control this urge that you have to do this thing, whatever it is. So today's Tanya really teaches us that you do have control and that this voice that's telling you to act in whatever way you know is destructive, you know is not the right thing to do, it does not have to rule over you. It doesn't actually have power over you. And God, in fact, granted you this other soul, this godly soul that actually has an advantage if you just merely switch and you uh, and you tap into that other soul. It's it. It naturally, it's not even, you know, it's not that the struggle is not real, but once you make that decision, once you decide that I'm going to go with the godly soul side, it will win and it can win and you can have self-control. So hopefully that will help you the next time that you uh, encounter this kind of challenge and to be continued where tomorrow we're going to continue with chapter 13 and I will speak with you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.